Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making news this morning, a teen is critical following a shooting on the city's north side overnight. Details on the way. I'm ABC's M. Wynn live on Capitol Hill. Supreme Court justices are expected to hear oral arguments on a case that could overturn Roe versus Wade. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, not as cold as yesterday morning. We're starting off at 53 degrees. And good morning. It is Wednesday. It's December 1st. Thanks for joining Ooh. us. Happy December already. Just one step closer to Christmas. Yeah. See, we're Solid. prepared. Got the red dress. You got the red tie. We're uh, Yeah. Getting ready. You shopping done? Oh, gosh, no. Then we're not really prepared. <laughs> well, not, not completely. Not yet. Speaking of which, I went to Target last night uh -oh. just to pick up a random item. Yeah. It's all picked over. Like, you better work quick because oh, no. really? stuff is leaving the uh, shelves. I got Christmas bags, just Maybe no gifts. Nervous. Yeah, I was like, I better get to work here. Gift cards. There Amazon. you go. <laughs> yeah. Good advice. Uh, one thing we're going to deal with this morning, guys, is fog. Visibility is down close to zero in Castroville, Hondo. We think that the fog walls are moving here around San Antonio. So it could affect the morning commute. Uh, you know the drill, low beams, take it slow if you do run into some of that fog. New Braunfels, Seguin, Pleasanton also reporting fog. And then it stretches over to Gonzales, Kennedy, Beeville. So large area here, there are some dense fog advisories in effect closer to the coast, not here in town. But if that changes, we'll let you know. Temperature wise, 52 to start here in San Antonio, some 40s on the map. It's going to be sort of a cool morning, but not cold as uh, Steph mentioned, and we'll have some lingering cloud cover and then break out into some afternoon sun. We think temperatures make it up to about uh, 75 or so. A little bit later today, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll get some more clouds here in the next couple of days. We have uh, talked about some small rain chances. We'll time that out for you and look ahead to the weekend coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a crash on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto now joins us live with what he's been able to learn early this morning. Jonathan. David, what we've learned, a man and a woman involved in that crash aren't hospitalized this morning, but this is what we know right now. San Antonio Police Department responded to the 2900 block of Shane Road. That's just outside of Loop 410 on the city's south side minutes before midnight. They say a male driver and a female passenger were pinned inside their vehicle after going over railroad tracks and crashing into a tree. Now, the driver is believed to be in his 40s and the female passenger in her late teens or early 20s. We do know San Antonio Antonio Fire Department, along with the EMS, responded quickly to the scene. They say they were able to quickly extract the driver pinned inside, but struggled a little more to get the female passenger out. Now, the female passenger is said to be in critical condition, and the male driver was badly hurt. They were both transported to Bamsey. Now, police say they are investigating to determine if alcohol was a factor, but say speed was definitely uh, a factor here in this crash as well. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto. KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Also new this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a shooting on the city's north side. It happened just after 9 p.m. last night in the 2400 block of Green Crest near Vance Jackson and I-10. Police say a girl in her teens was meeting up with that suspect in front of this house when the shooting happened. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police say that suspect got away in a dark colored vehicle. In just a few hours, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments for the most significant abortion rights case in the last three decades. Mississippi is asking the court to overturn Roe versus Wade and with the most conservative majority in a generation. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from the Supreme Court. This morning, Roe versus Wade hangs in the balance as the highest court considers a case on a new Mississippi law that seeks to ban nearly all abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. It's significantly earlier than the approximate 24 weeks established by Roe in 1973. This is the first time ever that a state has asked an originalist Supreme Court or a majority originalist Supreme Court to overturn Roe. The case, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, where the outcome could redefine reproductive rights across the country and impact other sectors from health care and the economy to criminal justice. It'll be heard by a court whose new conservative majority of justices, three chosen by former President Trump, is widely viewed as more sympathetic to opponents of abortion rights than any in a generation. Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Kavanaugh are sort of the two key justices to watch. 
This case comes as Texas hits three months with a near total ban on abortion still in place. Experts expected the court to rule on the Texas case ahead of the Mississippi one, but no decision yet. I think that if they end up deciding the Mississippi and Texas cases together, they, I think the most likely result would be they would uphold the Mississippi ban and then they would send the Texas case back to the lower courts. But the majority of Americans want Roe to stand. A recent poll by ABC News and the Washington Post found three in four say the choice to have an abortion should be left to the woman and her doctor. If Roe is reversed or rolled back, nearly half the states in the country are poised to ban or severely restrict abortion. The justices are not expected to announce their decision until next summer, but we might get a better understanding about how they might rule by listening to today's oral arguments. And when ABC News, Washington. It's 435 in your morning headlines. The investigation continues into a 15 year old student who opened fire at his Michigan high school yesterday, killing three students. Eight other people were wounded. Some critically, authorities were made aware of allegations circulating on social media that there had been threats of a shooting at the school. It has a population of about 1,700 students. However, they said they didn't know about the rumors until after the attack. This year's Atlantic hurricane season was one of the costliest on record. Part of the reason is that it's in the top three for the most U.S. storms. Damages from four of them topped more than a billion dollars each. And the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says Hurricane Ida cost more than $60 billion. The good news is the latter part of hurricane season was quieter than forecasters had predicted. And the investigation into October's fatal shooting during the filming of an Alec Baldwin movie leads to a store in Albuquerque. Mexico authorities looking into the deadly shooting received a judge's authorization to search PDQ Arm and Prop. That's the store. According to a warrant, officials say there are two potential ways live ammunition made it onto the film set. An affidavit released Tuesday reveals an industry veteran says he gave Seth Kinney from the prop store a can that had live rounds. Those, according to the affidavit, were to be used for training purposes on a separate film. It's believed that Kinney still had the ammo can when the Rust crew got ammunition. Elena Hudgens, the director of photography for Rust, died shortly after Baldwin discharged a prop firearm. And time now, it's 437 and about 53 degrees out there. Some big high school football games are coming up this Friday as is the big conference USA championship for UTSA. We'll have a preview coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam, not as chilly this morning. We're starting off already at 53 degrees and we're also expecting things to warm up later today. The Alamo Heights Mules entered the Class 5A state quarterfinals where they will face Liberty Hill this Friday night at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. That's after they were able to survive last week when they beat the Marble Falls Mustangs 10-7. to The only touchdown scored by the Mules, a one-yarder by James Sobey at the end of the first half, and the game wasn't won until Ethan Ball booted the 39-yard game-winning field goal with just two seconds left on the clock. That advanced the Mules. Now they put their undefeated 13-0 record on the line against Liberty Hill for the regional championship. I think it gave our guys a lot of confidence that they can play in those types of games and make plays when needed be. And it's just good to have somebody step up and make a play. Oh, it's huge. We got all the confidence in the world now, and we're going into this week thinking we can do anything. They're a pretty good team, but I feel like we're really good. And like, they're going to try to play hard, but we're going to play harder. We're going to work harder. The UTSA Roadrunners are preparing for their biggest game in school history when they host Western Kentucky this Friday night in the Alamo Dome for the first ever shot at a Conference USA Championship. This comes during a season of firsts, including their first 11 win season. It ended with their only loss of the year when they were throttled by North Texas and Denton on Saturday. We're trying to forget about that one. This will be the Roadrunners' second meeting against the Hilltoppers. They won the first time. In week six, it was a shootout, 52-46. The Roadrunners realized it might take another Herculean effort to win this one. You know, it means a lot. You know, we came into this program uh, with dreams to, to one day play for this. It's right in front of us. Um, so we got to go out there and achieve it, uh, and it won't come easy. The intensities went up higher. Um, like I said, we are, everybody's butting up. Um, with us losing, we know that we, we got to 
bring our, our eight game plan playing against Western Kentucky after them going eight straight game. Uh, we played against them shot for shot in the sixth game, so we know what it takes to, to beat them, and we got to continue to do that. San Antonio business leaders led by April and Sierra have raised almost $100,000 to help sell out the Dome Friday night. They're giving away free tickets to all UTSA students. Conference USA Championship game starts at 6 o'clock in the Dome. Come ready, come loud, and go Roadrunners. Hey, LeBron James has been placed in the NBA's health and safety protocol after he had a confirmed positive COVID-19 test. That means he missed last night's game against the Kings and will more than likely miss several other games. The NBA mandates a player must spend a minimum of 10 days away from the team without any physical activity. After that, a player has to undergo a cardiac screening and reconditioning before he can return to the team. Earlier in training camp, James said he had been vaccinated. And the Spurs are on the road tomorrow night to start a three-game road trip. They've got two in a row under their belt headed out of town, so hopefully they can extend that streak. Tomorrow night, it's the Portland Trailblazers, 9 o'clock, the Moda Center. And then I think they go to Golden State and then Phoenix, and those two teams are oh. smoking hot. Okay, so. so hopefully at least this next one. Yeah, yeah. so you're going to have to wear some silver and black for the rest of the week or something. You're going to have to give them <laughs> some kind of good luck along the way. Candles no, or something. That's yes. your job. Okay. <laughs> or 43, 53 degrees. And coming up next is just days until GMA's Michael Strahan lifts off into space. Now we're getting exclusive details on his training regimen. And welcome back. It's 446. We are learning more about the training ABC's Michael Strahan will undergo before he heads to space. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's T minus eight days until Michael Strahan's lift off to space. And this morning, we're about to hear exclusive details on his training regimen. We cover each portion, every event, you know, from the engine start to lift off to separation from the booster itself to re-entry into the atmosphere and landing. Sarah Knight serves as capsule communication between Blue Origin Mission Control and the crew of New Shepard 19. They have literally changed my life and I I have never even flown. So I cannot wait for Michael to get up in the morning and to meet his crew. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with one of Michael Strahan's distinguished crewmates, Laura Shepard Churchley. She's the daughter of Alan Shepard, the first American in space and the fifth person to walk on the moon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. How did he get that gig? I don't know, but he can have it. He can? Yeah, I don't want to go to space. No, I would thank you. trade places with him in a heartbeat. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. That's scary. <laughs> you guys can go test it out for us, see how it looks, see how it goes. And then get back to you. You wouldn't go? We'll get back to you in a couple of years. Give it a couple of years. Yeah. All right. Well, that's more room for people like me then. Yeah. I'd go, you go David. in a flash. Man. I'd get you signed up. Start a petition. I'd be willing to stay a little longer than just go up for two minutes. Back. <laughs> I bet you would. Uh, let's go outside for you right now. We've got uh, OK conditions here in San Antonio. You can see the visibility is fine here in town. That's not the case in other spots. 52 degrees at the airport. Mostly clear skies. Dew point is at 50. This number is on the rise. And keep in mind when you see a temperature and the dew point starting to get close and you have a light wind, that's when you start to see some fog. So we have the right ingredients in place. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, but there certainly are some spots that are trending down as far as visibility goes. Castroville is one of them. Close to zero there. Hondo, about half a mile. New Braunfels, Seguin, other spots seeing some thick fog at this hour. Pleasanton as well. And we think this, uh, this will continue to grow. The fog will expand around the area, and that could include San Antonio. Temperature-wise, 49 right now at Holotus, 59 in Kerrville, 48 in Hondo, 51 in New Braunfels. We'll zoom out some, and you've got some upper 50s around Catula, but you've also got some 40s stretching from Austin down to Gonzales and Kennedy. So it's a cool morning, not necessarily cold, and the moisture is helping us out some. Dew points are on the rise. We've got dew points near 50, as we showed you earlier. Those numbers will only go up from here. The setup across the country. We've uh, got the jet stream still pretty far to the north. Uh, I mean, it's not really dipping south, allowing a lot of cold air to move into the United States, at least not yet. There is a trough across the Great Lakes that's producing some unsettled weather there. We're also watching an area of low pressure off of uh, the coast of Mexico down there on the Pacific. Some of that energy will head our way 
as we get into Friday. But I want to show you the temperatures across the country. It is again chilly, but not cold. You would expect this time of year to see some lower numbers. We're just not seeing it yet. But let me take you up into Canada and show you that there are some colder numbers up there. And uh, once you start seeing that cold air build, sometimes it can spill south kind of all at once. Uh, not saying that's going to happen, but we'll keep an eye on these numbers. I mean, negative 27 right now in Copper Mine. It's way up there in the Arctic Circle. But we know that cold air is building, and some of it could eventually push south sometime in December. Something to watch. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to get a big freeze here like we saw in February. Don't get nervous about that. But uh, in, certainly this is the time of year when we start to see some stronger fronts. Forecast by this afternoon, mostly sunny. And then as we get into Thursday, uh, we'll get some more high clouds moving across the sky. It is on Friday. A little piece of energy from that area of low pressure out west moves through. And that could generate a shower or two. Doesn't look great. This is not going to be a big rain event for us. So just some isolated stuff. And that'll be the case going into the weekend as well. Temperatures up around 75 today. We'll get rid of the clouds and the fog by about mid morning and then we'll get some sun this afternoon. Extended forecast will go 76 Thursday, just a 20% chance of rain on Friday with that little disturbance and then another small chance Sunday into Monday as we get a weak frontal boundary in here. Doesn't cool us down a whole lot. We're in the upper 60s on Monday, 74 on Tuesday. So pretty good looking forecast to start December, guys. We'll get back into fall. Yeah, it's kind of mild. Winter. Those are kind of. I mean, if you have temperatures in the 70s every day, I don't think we're complaining much here. No, it's nice still. We'll take yeah. it. Yeah. We can deal with the cold later. Exactly. <laughs> 451, 55 degrees. And coming up next, Adele announces a Las Vegas residency, plus a first look at the new West Side Story from Steven Spielberg. And your lotto numbers, we have pick three, one, six, one, fireball seven, daily four, two, six, seven, nine, fireball two. And your cash five is two, eight, 14, 16, 30. And mega million, seven, eight, 26, 30, 39, mega ball, 17, mega pliers two. Good luck, you could be rich, check your ticket. Welcome back, 454. We're getting your first look at Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. Plus, Adele is moving to Vegas. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Tonight, tonight, the world is full of light. The first reactions are in for Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. One name is getting a lot of attention. Newcomer Rachel Zegler takes on the starring role of Maria. And at the film's premiere this week, she said this is an updated version with a classic feel. The conversation about gentrification has been opened up vastly, and I think that's such an important part of our film, while also maintaining that charm of the original musical with all of that music and the dancing and the sweeping score. West Side Story getting rave reviews. It'll be in theaters December 10th. While there's Oscar buzz around West Side Story, it may be up against The Power of the Dog. Jane Campion's first film in 12 years is out today on Netflix, starring Kirsten Dunst, Benedict Cumberbatch, Jesse Plemons, and more in the story of two feuding Montana ranchers and brothers. It's also getting rave reviews. Go! Adele moving to Las Vegas in the new year part-time, starting a weekend residency at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace, her idol Celine Dion's old home. It starts January 21st and goes through mid-April. And happy birthday today to Janelle Monet, the Grammy-winning singer and celebrated actor, turns 36, while Sound of Metal Oscar nominee Riz Ahmed is 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA in response to the latest COVID variant, the World Health Organization advising a specific group of people to postpone their travel plans for now. And Microsoft is selling its ugly Windows sweater once again, just in time for Christmas. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. There you go. It might work for that ugly Christmas sweater party. And you won't be seeing Chris Cuomo on his nightly CNN show for a while. The TV host has been suspended over allegations that he played a role in helping his brother Andrew get around a sexual harassment scandal. We're going to have those details ahead on GMSA at 6. And outside with Trans Guide, Stephen Cavazos is here. He's going to have an update on all the traffic around town. What's it look like this morning? 
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio Police Department investigating a crash that's left two people hospitalized this morning. Details coming up next. Plus an update on the latest COVID variant and the renewed push among officials to get more Americans vaccinated. And outside with lock a little fog out there this morning. We'll see if that's going to hang around throughout the morning and cause traffic problems. Justin Horn will have that. Stephen Cavazos is here. Good morning. It's Wednesday, December 1st. Here's the problem with 30 days in a month. Uh oh. Your watch goes to 31 on your little date thing. <laughs> you have to fix and now it. Now you got to change it because oh, I was like, no. well, that's not right. So I got to fix my watch. And the other problem is that it went by super quick and now we have to get ready for Christmas. That's 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 true. Yes. Shopping. Very quick. Ooh. I know. <laughs> I have yeah. a lot of shopping to do. Justin, are you? even anywhere close. I was doing okay until just a few seconds ago. Now you stressed me out. Um, uh, yeah, with, got a lot to do. I got to get to work on Amazon. Hey, uh, we just got word from the National Weather Service. They have issued a dense fog advisory that includes San Antonio now. So we could see visibility drop below a quarter of a mile in some spots this morning. We're going to be watching those visibilities very closely. If you're heading out to the bus stop, we're going to be the low 50s. You may want to grab the code. It's it'll be a little foggy out there. Winds will be calm by this afternoon, though. You could lose the jacket. We'll be up around 74, mostly sunny. Suddenly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's look at some of those visibilities, see where we stand right now. Places like Castroville, close to zero. Uh, we're seeing that around New Braunfels, uh, down to about a quarter of a mile. And there's a look at some of the trans guide uh, shots. And I don't want to take away from Stephen here, but I just want to look and see if we have any foggy areas here in San Antonio. So far, looks OK. So maybe not to too many issues here in town, but if you get out into Medina County, or you go east into parts of Guadalupe County or Kamau County, you may find some of that fog. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We're at 49 right now. Holotus Port SA, 51 Randolph, 56 Canyon Lake. And then zooming out some, some 40s around Gonzales, 58 in Catula. Our forecast today does take us up to about 73. We will get the sun this afternoon. And uh, we'll see another round of fog probably coming up tomorrow, but so far it doesn't look like there's a lot of issues on the roads with the fog, but uh, we'll check in with Steven, the expert here. Hey, an expert. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I love that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Right now we are taking a look at TransGuide, and as Justin said, if you are going to be heading out, uh, make sure that you're driving carefully. Take it slow and have those low beams on as well. 37 at Hackberry. Pretty quiet start to our Wednesday morning. I keep on thinking it's Tuesday. We're inching closer to the weekend, but right now the roads have been pretty much quiet from what we're seeing at TransGuide. Now keep in mind there are some issues out there. Uh, we do have one issue where we detected a stall off of I-10, uh, but it doesn't appear that that's causing any issues right now. Just make sure that you move over or slow down when you see a stranded driver out there on the highway. Let's take you to the map because uh, this crash just popped up on 35. We need to talk to our friends over at TransGuide to find out how that's going to be impacting traffic for this early morning. But right now, things have been pretty much green as we start this new day, so that's a great way to wake up. And if you're going to be heading out the roads in the next few moments, may moments that is, maybe traveling to San Antonio, well, we have those inbound times for you right now. If you're coming in from I-10 and Bernie, just 25 minutes at this hour. 27 on minutes coming in from 281 and Bolverde, and not looking bad on 35 with 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels. We'll keep a lookout for that fog as Justin's been talking about, but 35 north at Loop 410 looks pretty like a quiet start so far, guys. Thanks, David. New this morning, two people in the hospital after a crash on the city's south side. We now know at least one person involved is in critical condition. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, we understand this crash is under investigation, but have they determined a cause? Well, we have learned that that is a man and a woman involved in that crash. And to answer your question, Stephanie, police are saying speed was definitely a factor in this crash. But this is what we know so far. San Antonio police responded to the 2900 block of Shane Road. That's right outside of Loop 410 on the city's south side just minutes before midnight. They say a male driver and a female passenger were pinned inside their vehicle after going over railroad tracks and crashing into a tree. Now, the driver is believed to be in his 40s and the female passenger in her late teens or early 20s. And we do know San Antonio Fire Department, along with EMS, responded quickly to the scene. They say they were able to quickly extract the driver pinned inside, but struggled a little more to get the female passenger out. Now. David, Stephanie, we're located outside of Bancy where they were both transported to. We do know that the female passenger is in critical condition and the male driver was badly hurt. Police are investigating to determine if alcohol was also a factor in this crash. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan.
Your electric bill is getting more expensive. CPS officials plan to propose a rate hike of just under 4% to City Council later today. And our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what we can expect to see on our electric bills. Good morning. Good morning, David, Stephanie. Yeah, in the near future, you most likely will see an increase on your CPS energy bills. That fate of the increase will be decided in January. That increase, however, is still lower than the 10% increase CPS officials previously talked about. The utility will utility company will ask city council today to consider a 3.85% increase to the base rate far below the 10% hike that former CEO Paula, Paula Gold Williams had previously said CPS Energy was considering but it likely won't be the last increase. The plan is to consider another incremental increase in a couple of years. The proposed 3.85% rate increase does not include the energy or fuel costs related to the February freeze. CPS Energy is also exploring ways to help pay for energy and fuel costs from the February freeze. Utility says it's made several improvements since that storm, including adding more circuits. Again, this is the last time the city council approved a rate hike was in November back in 2013 with a 4.25% bump to the electric and gas based rates. That took effect February of 2014. The city council will vote on today's proposal on January 13th. David and Stephanie. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. This morning, the Biden administration is now considering stricter testing rules for people traveling to the U.S. It comes as more countries report cases of the variant. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, the CDC is stepping up efforts to detect the Omicron variant. The White House is now offering testing for international travelers at airports in New York, Atlanta, Newark, and San Francisco. And the administration says it's now working to modify testing guidelines to require people coming to the U.S. to be tested one day before their flight. We have the tools and surveillance in place to identify the Omicron variant. We also have the tools to prevent Omicron from increasing the strain on our society and our healthcare system. Hundreds of Omicron cases have been confirmed in at least 20 countries. The World Health Organization is urging unvaccinated people over age 60 to postpone travel. Doctors say it could be weeks before critical information about the variant is known, including its transmissibility and whether vaccines can stop it. This new variant is a cause for concern but not panic. There are some positive signs emerging. Israel's health minister says early data indicates people who've received the vaccine booster shot are protected. And a scientist who helped develop Pfizer's COVID vaccine says even if the variant causes more breakthrough infections, the vaccine should prevent severe illness. Dr. Anthony Fauci says as of now, the variant is not a reason to cancel holiday gatherings. I would not change any plans, but that doesn't mean you should be cavalier about it. People should try and get vaccinated if they're not vaccinated and get a boost as soon as you can. The first at-home pill to treat COVID is one step closer to approval. An FDA advisory panel voted 13 to 10 in favor of Merck's pill aimed at treating some adults who have mild to moderate symptoms. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Many people have taken a hit because of the pandemic and here locally, if you need food, the San Antonio Food Bank is holding a mega distribution later this morning. They will hand out boxes of food at the AT&T Center from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. You can register on site or pre-register online. We have a link on our website at kset.com. It's 508 and it is 52 degrees. And still ahead, a look at why Cyber Monday sales didn't do as well as expected for some online retailers. Because Justin was hanging out at the brick and mortar stores yesterday. No. Also coming up next, the latest on the case as well as known San Antonio surgeon and cyclist who was hit and killed by a drunk driver. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting off at 52 degrees, not as cold as yesterday, kind of mild actually. We'll be right back. It has been nearly three years since a well-known San Antonio surgeon and cyclist was struck and killed by a drunk driver. The person convicted in the fatal death of Najee Kairouz is now facing 15 years in prison after a judge agreed to a plea bargain on Tuesday. Melissa Peoples has been out on bond since the fatal hit and run. She pled no contest to failing to stop and render aid and pled guilty to intoxication manslaughter. After her hearing, Peoples made it a point to tell the victim's family how remorseful she was. 
the hurt hasn't gone away. It's three years and it's it's inescapable. Just that the Cavers family will know that forever. How sorry. How sorry I am. And for someone I never met, he truly has made a great deal of good in my life. People says she plans to take any alcohol or drug counseling and programs she needs to stay on the right path. Her official sentencing is scheduled for December 14th. It's 513 and 53 degrees. And coming up, we are checking out Netflix's biggest movie debut to date. And if you're looking for an ugly sweater for one of those Christmas parties, Microsoft selling some ugly window sweaters again. And you may get a little nostalgic with one of them as well. So, I called back. Same State Farm agent. Texted the next day. Same guy. Is that even legal? And get this. He remembered my name. Of course. <laughs> Hey, blink twice if you're in danger. Whoa, guys, at State Farm, we actually get to know you. It's called service. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. For skin that works as hard as you do, don't settle for silver. Seven intense moisturizers to help stop dry skin before it starts. Gold Bond Healing Lotion, championing your skin. Shop Kohl's Cyber Deal Days and save on your holiday shopping with an extra 20% off. Plus, get your gifts even faster with free store pickup. Shop and save big during Cyber Deal Days, going on now at Kohl's. And welcome back. It is 5-16, 16, 16 minutes after 5 o'clock. Cyber Monday sells fell below expectation. ABC's Mona Kozar Abbey has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bytes, sales on Cyber Monday. Online spending hit $10.7 billion on Cyber Monday, slightly down from a record $10.8 billion last year. But analysts are still predicting record-breaking digital sales over the entire holiday season. The Rock makes history on Netflix. Dwayne Johnson's latest film, Red Notice, has become the most watched movie in the streaming service's history, recording nearly 330 million viewing hours. Johnson beat out Sandra Bullock's 2018 movie, Bird Box. Finally, Microsoft is selling Windows-themed ugly sweaters for the second year in a row. This year's design is dedicated to the classic Windows game, Minesweeper. They cost about $75 at the Xbox gear shop. The sweater campaign supports a charity and they're selling out fast. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Eek. <laughs> That's expensive. 75 bucks. For an ugly sweater. Yeah. Wow. Yesterday, Rooney asked me, what's an ugly sweater? Because she's, she's going to have like dress up days during uh -huh. the week. And Do they have an ugly day, sweater day? They have an ugly sweater day. She does not have one. She's like, what's an ugly sweater? And I'm like, well, let me tell you about this. You can make an ugly sweater for yes. cheaper than that. I think we might do that. Roll it in the mud, do something with it. <laughs> you well, know, not never, that kind of ugly. I, I've never had a sweater oh. that I thought was ugly. I'm not saying that I have a great taste, <laughs> but I've never had a sweater that I thought was ugly. Yeah, and, and well, I think it's just like, it means like funny. Oh. It can mean funny. It doesn't have to be like ugly, ugly. Well, those look pretty cool. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, let, let's take a look at the roadways. Medeo Creek looks a little bit busier here off US 90. Uh, you know, talking to our friends at TransGuy, Justin's been talking about a little bit of that dense fog that we could possibly see out there. Uh, this is definitely looking pretty foggy out from this TransGuy shot. Again, US 90 at Medeo Creek, so make sure you are taking it slow like a lot of these drivers that we're seeing out there. So that's some good news to see. Uh, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because unfortunately there are some issues to be on the lookout for this early in the morning. I-10 westbound at West Avenue. We have a stall detected there. We talked about it a little bit earlier on. It does appear that driver is receiving assistance from a TxDOT Hero truck, so make sure you give them plenty of room. Jump down here, though. We have a crash off Fisher Road at I-35. Uh, not seeing any delays on 35, but something to be on the lookout for if you're getting your morning started early and have to travel through there. A wider look at the map does show that it's still pretty much green on the screen, and, you know, of course, we love to see that and say it on the morning show, but... Uh, as always, make sure that you are taking it slow on the roads, especially when conditions can be a little bit treacherous. Uh, but right now, we're going to keep our eyes on this fog that looks like it's uh, definitely pretty dense out there, guys. Yeah, have to be careful. Yeah. And how long is the fog going to last? We'll give it to about uh, 9 or 10 o'clock this morning. So mid-morning, the fog will go, and then we'll lose the clouds thereafter, and then we get some afternoon sun. But right now, the fog, as Stephen pointed out, 
starting to build a little bit here around San Antonio. We're really kind of surrounded though. The, the lower visibility is out in New Braunfels, Seguin, Castroville, and Honda. That's where visibility is close to half a mile or so. Castroville actually reporting close to zero. So we'll see how the uh, visibility in San Antonio kind of reacts here. Hey, Randolph is down to a mile, so we've seen that come down. And there is a dense fog advisory in effect until 9 a.m. this morning. It does include San Antonio and then all the way to the coast. Places like Victoria and Bevo also dealing with the fog this morning. Let's look at December. We are in December now. We average about two inches of rain during the month or two inches of precipitation. Has snowed before in December. If you remember 2017, got some snow here in San Antonio. Uh, no snow in the forecast, though, as of right now. Uh, as far as temperatures go, we start off the month averaging 67 degrees and then we fall down to about 63. Lows are right there in the 40s. It was pretty chilly last year. We'll see how this December plays out. So far, starting off on a mild note. Temperatures 51 degrees at the airport, reporting mostly clear skies. Northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour, but again, fog and some cloud cover should build in briefly this morning. 56 Canyon Lake, 52 Comfort, 49 right now in Hondo, 57 in Bandera, and we've got 52 in Carissa Springs. A dew point tracker shows dew points increasing a little bit more than what we're seeing right now. They're already up quite a bit, but moving into the 60s by Friday and Saturday, so it feels a little more muggy outside over the weekend. Here's what our forecast looks like. Uh, after losing some of those uh, morning clouds, we'll get into just some high clouds this afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock. Tomorrow, we should get even more high cloudiness. So we'll call it partly cloudy on your Thursday. Still no rain. It's not until Friday we get a little piece of energy coming in from the south and west that that may kick up a shower or two. This is Friday 10 a.m. And uh, everything here looks pretty light. I, I don't expect much out of this. Yeah, and as we get into Sunday, there's another small chance there, too, because we got a, a weak frontal boundary in here. But if you have weakened plans, I wouldn't worry too much about it. 75 degrees today. That's after those clouds go away. We get a south southeasterly wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And the looking at the extended forecast, we'll go 76 tomorrow. There could be another round of fog and morning cloud cover, by the way. That uh, is the case all the way through Saturday. 20% chance of rain Friday. 20% chance it looks like Sunday into early Monday with a frontal boundary, although this front isn't terribly strong. And I was just looking back at some Facebook memories. I think it was last year. We were already in the 20s at this point on this on this day. So really? it really just goes to show you that uh, wow. you know every year obviously is different, but this is uh, a mild start to December for sure. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, we'll handle the cold later. That's right. And we so. were in the 20s in February. That's true. Mm. In the teens. Stop. In the single digits. We don't want to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh, come on. Memory. He brought it up. He brought up the memories. So just... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's talking about good memories. <laughs> <laughs> Still ahead in your morning spotlight, Adele announces a Vegas residency. Plus, Nicolas Cage is set to play Dracula. And welcome back, 525. Adele planning a series of live shows, but in just one city here in the U.S. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in the Hollywood Minute. Adele plays live. Hot on the heels of the success of her new album, 30, the British singer-songwriter has announced a Las Vegas residency at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace. The weekends with Adele performances kick off January 21st and run through April 16th. Casting news, Nicolas Cage bites into his next role. Universal Pictures has cast Cage in the role of Dracula in the movie Renfield. Cage will star opposite another Nicholas, Nicholas Holt, in the title role. I could be with you tonight, beside a fire shining bright. I'd open up to all your light this Christmas. Nora Jones gets jolly. The nine time Grammy winner has released a music video for Christmas Calling from her holiday album debut, I Dream of Christmas. Jones recently received her 18th Grammy nomination for next year's awards ceremony. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. So there's two shockers coming out of that story. Yours was, that's Nora Jones? <laughs> I know, it's just different. And then Steve, Steve and, and Justin are going, Nicolas Cage, Dracula? <laughs> We're all well, learning something this morning, like, yeah. There you go. 
Still ahead on GMSA, the Supreme Court will hear arguments today in a case that could result in the repeal of Roe v. Wade. We'll break it down for you, what you need to know coming up. Plus, why a federal judge has blocked President Biden's vaccine requirement for federal contractors in three more states. Plus, we've got a special pet standing by, ready to go home with you just in time for Christmas. It's 527, it's 52. We'll be right back. You may call him one of Santa's helpers. With every brushstroke, he helps businesses get ready for the holiday season. I'm Katrina Weber. That story's coming up. Making headlines this morning, the U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear a case that could change the landmark Roe v. Wade abortion case. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, you can see it's a little foggy out there, so be careful. You have to head out on the roadways this morning. And good morning. It's Wednesday, and we are in an entirely new month. It's that's, December 1st. That's right. I mean, goodbye November, hello December. That means we're closer to Christmas. We're closer to the panic of shopping. <laughs> panic oh, I got to get it done. Yes, I, I agree. I only have a few things done, and, but I'm not ahead of the game at all. You? Oh. Are you kidding me? I'm behind before I ever get started. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> the night before. Justin's always ahead of the game. No, I'm not. <laughs> you guys seriously are stressing me out here. Uh, and also with the shortages, like I'm nervous there's not going to be stuff available. Did you uh, say you went to a store yesterday and shelves are already? There was stuff that was gone. And I was like, well, okay, better get to work. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, visibility is down this morning. We have uh, low visibility in the Braunfels. Uh, Randolph has kind of been jumping around here. It's at three miles. Seguin's down to half a mile. Hondo and Castroville are kind of surrounded here in San Antonio. If you're going east or west out of town, you're going to run into some of this fog. I would imagine that we'll see visibility lower a little bit here in town, too. So just beware. Creaso Springs half a mile. Kennedy also reporting some fog this morning. Temperatures right around 50 degrees here around San Antonio. Interestingly, Kerrville and Fredericksburg are quite a bit warmer. Why is that? A little area of clouds right over top of them. So that's helping to keep temperatures up some this morning. And you can kind of see that little area of low clouds there. We'll see if that grows too. And we may get some cloudy skies for a time this morning. But the, the good news here, if you like sun, that is, that we're expecting mostly sunny skies this afternoon. We make it up to about 73 for a high today. Southerly winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hey, Steven, are you seeing any fog there showing up on any of the Transkite cameras? Yeah, you know, I talked to our friends over at Transkite a little bit earlier, Justin. They gave us a few shots. This is what we're looking at at US 90 at State Highway 211. Pretty, uh, pretty foggy out there. Almost difficult to make out exactly where the road is. The only indication is that we can see these vehicles are driving through there pretty smoothly at this hour, taking it slow. So again, when you see conditions like that, make sure you have the low beams on and don't rush it. Uh, make sure you get to your destination wherever it is, work, school, safely. Let's take you to the map, though. There was an incident here off I-35 at Loop 1604. Looks like this was in the northbound lanes. Earlier saw some flashing lights out there. Uh, looks like that may have just cleared out. However, there seems to be a small buildup still remaining on 35 over near the forum uh, in Live Oak. So just make sure that you are driving carefully. Otherwise, pack your patience this morning. Let's go ahead and take you uh, to that jump over here because we still have that stall off I-10 westbound at West Avenue. That's not causing any issues. A jump down here. We still have that crash off Fisher Road at I-35. Overall, Tuesday, I keep on saying Tuesday morning. I think we're still in November. We are Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we are looking pretty much uh, green on the screen. So again, great start to this morning. However, be on the lookout for that fog. And right now, if you are going to be traveling to San Antonio, Pretty much green across the board, so no issues there. But of course, take it easy and keep your eyes on the road, guys. New this morning, Judson ISD approved extra money for full and part time district employees at a school board meeting last night. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to explain how this one bonus time works and what the district said they approved. Hey, good morning, guys. We all know that this pandemic has been extra hard on our teachers and school leaders. It's why Judson ISD says they approved incentives for its employees to encourage retention through the end of the year. In an effort to retain its teachers, Judson ISD just approved an incentive for both full and part-time employees at a special board meeting. Last night, the board decided to give full-time employees $1,000 
and part-time employees $500. In addition, substitute teachers who have worked more than 50 days will be paid $500, and substitutes who have worked between 20 and 49 days will get $400. The total cost of the incentives is $4.2 million, which is funded through special funds provided to help districts recover from the pandemic. Judson ISD Superintendent Dr. Jeanette Ball said, quote, these last few years have not only brought on unique challenges, but it has also highlighted the way our district bands together to always do what is best for our students. The superintendent also said that Justin ISD employees should see those bonuses in their December paychecks. Stephanie, uh, David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Salsa and ISD board members have called for a special meeting to discuss comments made during a meeting in mid-November by the district's top leaders. The private conversation was captured by a microphone that was left on just minutes before the start of the closed session portion of the meeting. The superintendent and board president were discussing a contract and hirings before the mic was shut off. Three board members have been asking for a meeting to figure out if any wrongdoing took place. The more days that go by, our community members are becoming more demanding. What are we going to do about this? What are you guys going to do? Specifically her and I, right? Because we're the ones that have been up there repeatedly championing him. On Monday, the TA notified the district a new special investigation was being opened on allegations that trustees were getting involved in the suspension of an employee and making hiring recommendations. The next board of trustees meeting is set for December 6th at 6 p.m. Today, the Supreme Court takes up the most important abortion case in a generation, a case that could fundamentally transform one of the most controversial laws on the books, Roe v. Wade. CNN's Brett Conway has a look ahead at the arguments on the Mississippi abortion law set to begin in D.C. this morning. Jane Roe versus Henry Wade, a case filed in Dallas, Texas, 50 years ago. Less than three years later, the Supreme Court ruled to affirm abortion rights nationwide. Since then, the case we now know as Roe v. Wade has been at the center of American politics. Trust women! Trust women! We will abolish abortion! Now, the justices consider a momentous question. Should Roe v. Wade be overturned? Front and center, a Mississippi law signed in 2018, though it's been blocked by lower courts ever since because it directly conflicts with Roe v. Wade and the 1992 case Planned Parenthood v. Casey. These cases establish the Constitution protects a woman's choice to have an abortion, and states can only ban abortions after the point of viability. That's when a fetus can survive outside the womb. In 1992, the court said that's between 23 and 24 weeks, but the Mississippi law bans abortions after 15 weeks. If the justices uphold the Mississippi law, it would be much easier for states to ban or more seriously restrict abortion rights. With one estimate of 26 states fully banning abortions, seen here in orange. With nearly a half century of legal precedent built upon Roe v. Wade hanging in the balance. I'm Britt Conway reporting. It is 538 and it is strike three for President Biden's COVID-19 mandate. On Tuesday, a federal judge blocked the vaccine requirement for federal contractors in Kentucky, Ohio and Tennessee. This is the third time in the past few weeks that the president's call for mandatory vaccines were halted. The judge said in his 29 page opinion that the vaccine mandate went above Biden's authority under the Federal Property and Administrative Services Act. This comes one day after a Missouri judge stopped the vaccine mandate for some health care workers in 10 states. A Senate panel wants the CEOs of major airlines to testify about recent mass flight cancellations. The Senate Commerce Committee has invited seven airline executives to testify at a hearing on December 8th at 10 a.m. Airlines received billions in federal aid and loans in exchange for keeping employees on the job during the coronavirus pandemic. However, issues at American Airlines and Southwest Airlines canceled hundreds of flights this year, stranding masses of passengers. The airlines blamed the cancellations in part on weather. 539, 53 degrees. And coming up next, how you can take some easy precautions to avoid holiday injuries while you are setting up your Christmas decorations. Be careful on the ladder. Number one. Number one. Outside with live cam, there is some fog in the area. It could be hanging around for a few hours, so just know that when you're getting up and getting ready to head out, you might want to use your fog lamps.
The most wonderful time of the year also has a reputation for being among the most dangerous and a huge contributor to holiday injuries, your Christmas decorations. So here's Ursula Perry with what tends to go wrong with all that tinsel, Christmas trees, and mm -hmm. holiday trinkets. If you haven't started decorating yet, you might be feeling a bit rushed, and that is your first mistake. Hurrying up to the attic to get boxes of Christmas treasures is the best way to end up in the ER. The most unstable position that your back can be in and puts you at most risk for an injury is when you're holding something heavy in front of yourself, you're leaning out forwards, and you're moving to the side and twisting. Sounds just like what you would do if you were up in the attic pulling a box down. Yep, exactly. Hanging up your outdoor lights is inherently dangerous, too, according to University Hospital's Dr. Brian Fricke. Severe injuries when people are putting up decorations or hanging lights, uh, they crawl on their roofs and uh, invariably will fall off. Uh, a lot of fractures, um, head injuries, uh, spine injuries uh, that can really put a damper on a holiday. As for the tree topper, take your time so you don't end up taking a trip to the ER. If you do hurt yourself, particularly from a serious fall from a ladder, Dr. Fricky recommends you not hesitate to ask for help getting to medical care. Lift with your knees bent or just get a friend to help you with all the heavy stuff. And finally, try doing your decorating in the morning before you get tired at the end of the day and before you might have let's say, indulged in any Christmas spirits. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> yeah, that time it wouldn't be good. No. And be careful on the ladder, hanging the lights. You know, you can hire people to come over and put lights on your house that are pretty professional and pretty good at it. Really? And there's firefighters that'll oh, do it really? for you. You know, for a fee. But oh, for a fee. Around. And you would think a firefighter would pretty much know how to, you know. H handle, handle dangerous a, stuff. A ladder and, yes. you know, the roof and everything else. So. Those guys are good at it. And look at this video here. Up next, we're checking in with our friends at the Animal Defense League and a pet that wants to call home today. It is puppy time over there at the Animal Defense League. Michelle is here, and who is this little this one you have? This is Lucy. She Hello, is one sweetie. of our senior babies available for adoption at our Nacogdoches campus, and she is 12. Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> she still has a lot of spunk left she in her. She does. She has so much energy. She's so sweet. Honestly, she just wants to curl up in your arms. Mm -hmm. um, she does have allergies. We noticed earlier she was coughing a little bit, but you know, it's Texas. A lot of people say, have allergies. <laughs> wait till mountain cedar season, right? Oh, and she likes that right behind the ear. Oh, right you've there. got the spot. You've got the spot. So <laughs> what y'all got going on? So we are really pushing adoptions right now. Uh, we are at capacity to the max. So we are encouraging everyone, if you've thought about adopting, this is now absolutely the time. When you adopt, you save two lives because you're giving us the space to take in another baby. Um, we are also going to be having an event on Friday Friday, December 3rd at our Paul Jolly Adoption Center, where we will have Santa Paws there available to get photos with you and your baby. It is open to the public. We'll be there from 11 to 3. And uh, we encourage everyone to look at our social media pages and our website, adltexas.org, to get more information. Um, but we're ready to kick off the holiday season and get yeah. everybody home. You get a picture and make and take your list to Santa Claus as well, exactly. too. Exactly. Right? Lots of, lots you just of want to get a home. That's yeah. our one wish. Well, remember, you can adopt over there <laughs> at the uh, main campus of the Animal Defense League, 11th and Nacogdoches, or as Michelle mentioned, the Paul Johnny Center across from the zoo. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you want to adopt. All right, there's some fog out there, and with fog comes problems. That's right. Uh, if you're not taking it slow, and, uh, and of course, right now we are seeing that here. US 90 at State Highway 211. Uh, also, at US 90 at Mithio Creek. So, again, for our friends out there that are getting their morning started early, make sure that you give yourself plenty of time before getting out on the roadways. But thankfully, those issues that we've been seeing haven't been really big. That's going to cause any impact when it comes to that morning drive. Let's take a quick look around town. 1604 at Spurs Ranch. Pretty dark out there. We have a few folks. Traffic Pick it up there, though, at 410 at Jackson Keller for a Wednesday morning. But let's go ahead and take you to the map and see how things are shaping up. Uh, right now, we do want to start up here, though, off of I-10 in Kendall County for some roadway construction. We've talked about this for a few times. Monday, November 8th, it started, but we'll be wrapping up on December 6th. So we still got some ways to go, but it's led to the full closure of the eastbound exit 540 ramp to State Highway 46, or otherwise known as Bandera Road. Traffic in the meantime will be diverted to the US 87 exit ramp and use a scenic 
Loop Road, turn, Road turnaround. In fact, I was up in Bernie with the family over the holiday break, and I did see those signs out there. So make sure that you are taking it slower. Find those alternative routes. Check those vehicles as well, because we still have that pesky stall out there off I-10 westbound at West Avenue. But other than that, it's been a pretty quiet start. We're watching this crash, though, off 35 at Fisher Road, uh, but doesn't look like it's causing any problems as well. And it looks like a new stall may have popped up along 35. We'll check that out a little bit later on in this newscast. But right now, it's foggy outside, so make sure you use those low beams, guys. Good advice. Good reminder. And Justin, it's going to be pretty nice after all the fog moves out, I guess. Once we lose the fog, should be another nice afternoon. We've we've had a pretty good stretch here of, of, of great weather. As uh, as Stephen was talking about the fog there, we saw the visibility at Randolph drop off again. So it's down about half a mile. We see the fog spreading east to west into the city. So there is going to be some fog, especially on the city's east side. Beware. Uh, we're looking at some of the visibilities here. Gonzalez, Kennedy. Uh, New Braunfels, Hondo, Casterville, Rock Springs, Creaso Springs, just to name a few areas dealing with fog this morning. So far at the airport, visibility is still at 10 miles. We'll see if it stays that way. Uh, it could change. There is still plenty of time for that to happen. Dense fog advisory in effect until 9 a.m. this morning. Includes San Antonio along the I-35 corridor here in south and east. Uh, we are still seeing some fog along the coast as well. There's a look outside. Yeah, the, the airport looks okay. Uh, not seeing a lot of visibility, visibility issues yet. 51 at the airport, 53 Stinson, 49 at Kelly, one of the cool spots around town, and 50 at Randolph with fog being reported there. 46 in Holotus, 49 Hondo, 54 right now Comfort. You're sitting at 49 in New Braunfels as well. And there is a little area of cloud cover sitting right over Fredericksburg and Kerrville. That's actually keeping temperatures up some this morning. Those are a couple of the warm spots uh, with upper 50s there. Uh, as far as dew points go, We've seen the dew points rise into the 50s. That's still not bad, but the, the dew point and temperature getting close together are one of the reasons we're getting the fog this morning. And I think next couple of days you'll start to feel the humidity maybe a little bit more. It's not going to be bad, uh, but we will see those uh, dew points rise up close to 60 by the weekend. Here's the setup, and we noticed that uh, there's ridge out west. A little dip in the jet stream over the Great Lakes. So there is some cold air there, but not bitterly cold. Some snow flying this morning from Green Bay down to Milwaukee. And temperatures there in the 30s, so not too, too cold. The one really cold spot, Caribou, Maine, sitting at 9 degrees. Sort of the edge of a colder air mass that sits up in Canada. And the numbers up there are really cold. There is a nice chunk of, of bitterly cold air. It's negative 27 in Copper Mine, Canada. Now the question is, will some of this cold air drop down into the United States? It's building. It's possible, but we're still, I think, a ways away from that happening. We'll keep tabs on it and let you know, uh, but there's nothing that tells me we're going to see a big intrusion of cold air anytime soon. Certainly not down here in South Texas. Uh, we look at the forecast. We're going to get some more high clouds drifting across the sky this afternoon. A little thicker cloud cover tomorrow, and then by the time we get into Friday, a little piece of energy comes in out of Mexico that could be just enough to kick, kick off a shower or two, but it doesn't look great. Rain chances are probably only 20%, and we're talking a few showers here or there. Um, that'll be the case over the weekend, too. I think we'll have another shot maybe on Sunday, but certainly not going to interrupt your weekend plans, I don't think. 75 degrees today. We lose the clouds and fog by about mid-morning. The extended forecast will go 76 on Thursday, 74 Friday. Any one of those mornings, we could see some fog and cloud cover, and there's that 20% chance Friday. Another small chance there Sunday into Monday. Minus 27. Yeah, but I mean, that's way up there, David. That, yeah. That's that's in polar vortex territory. Yeah, it is. It sure is. <laughs> yes. You got, you, it got in to, there, you got to use it today. Hey, it's December 1st. Well, yeah. yeah. Waited a long time to say that. Yeah. Have you? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> and time now is 553 and about 53 degrees out there. Let's check some winning lottery numbers. As we go to break, pick three, one, six, one. Fireball is seven. Your deadly four is two, six, seven, nine. Fireball is two. Cash five, two, eight, 14, 16, 30. And your Mega Millions, seven, eight, 26, 30, 39. Mega Ball 17, Mega Flyer two. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're tracking the very latest on that tragic school shooting, the Michigan community coming together for a candlelight vigil overnight, and the FBI raiding the home of the 15-year-old suspect. We are learning new details about how the tragedy unfolded. We'll share them with you right here on GMA.
And finally, this hour at 557, is this brilliant or hideous? It looks like there's a split opinion on this one. People in New Jersey are visiting this cardboard creation made to look like a Christmas tree. Some compared it to a pile of Amazon shipping boxes. Others described it as a transcendent work of art. You can take a closer look and judge for yourself. We've got the article about that uh, pile of boxes. <laughs> Offcaset.com, just go over there. Hey, still to come, the Cowboys are down another player courtesy of the coronavirus. Will they be ready for their Thursday night matchup with New Orleans? They'll be ready, but how many guys are going to be available is the question. And we'll have the latest on the overnight shooting that sent one man to the hospital. The shooter still on the loose. That's coming up in the next hour. Also in the next hour, we've got your traffic. We've got some fog out there. Justin will have your forecast, and Stephen will have your traffic situation coming up. A crash on the city south side leaves one person in critical condition and another badly hurt. Details coming up next. An overnight shooting on the northwest side sends one man to the hospital. The shooter still on the loose. We'll tell you what we know coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, kind of a foggy start to your day. We're at 53 degrees, not as cold as yesterday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It's not as cold, but we're in a colder month because today is the first day of December. It is Wednesday. Welcome to it. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are ready for December. I have a red dress. You have a red tie. Yeah. Christmas uh, time, isn't it? That's right. We just haven't started our shopping. That's the only thing that we're behind on. Uh, gift cards and new ideas. New ideas. Different, different, <laughs> different ways to go about this because of you know circumstances we find ourselves in these days. Got to be creative. Yeah, get creative. creative. <laughs> Think so. Mm. I'll make you a card for Christmas, David. I'll take it. <laughs> That'll be cute. Get out the crayons. Uh, forget yep. about it. Uh, <laughs> we may have some fog this morning. We've seen some of that around the area. Visibility is okay here in San Antonio, but we're noticing visibility is down in places like New Braunfels, Pleasanton, Castroville, Hondo. Uh, even towards Randolph, that number has been dropping consistently. So we know fog is starting to move in on the east side of San Antonio. Heads up, we may see this spread uh, over the city here next couple of hours. Uh, temperature wise, right around 50 here in town. 59 Kerrville, 50 in Hondo, 51 Uvalde, 52 in Pleasanton. And I should point out, we do have a dense fog advisory in effect that does include San Antonio until 9 a.m. this morning. Radar and satellite, no rain to contend with. But we do have some morning clouds that are trying to build here. And so the fog, the cloud cover, that'll hang around through mid-morning, and then we'll get some sun this afternoon. It'll turn into a nice Wednesday, 73 by 2 p.m., 75 for our high temperature today. Southerly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Some more fog in the forecast. Let's check in on the roadways this morning with that visibility down in a few spots. Are there any issues? Well, you know, thankfully, Justin, we haven't spotted anything big just yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at Trans Guide, though. US 90 at Medeo Creek does show that traffic is at least picking up at this hour, but still very foggy from what we're seeing. Some of these Trans Guide shots, US 90 at State Highway 211. Again, here's US 90 at Medeo Creek. The morning commute is picking up, so take it slow, especially in some of those areas that Justin has told us that we can expect some of that fog moving in. But right now, again, things have been moving. Six 1604 Kulevita, pretty quiet, but let's go ahead and take you to the map because one of the things that we continue to see are these stalls. This one off I-35 northbound at O'Connor Road, not causing any issues. Thankfully, the lanes in both the north and southbound of 35 are still pretty much green, so you're not going to see any delays again at this hour, but we know as we inch closer to that morning rush, that could quickly change. Let's go ahead and take you right to those inbound times. If you plan on heading into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, no issues right now. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton. 37 with just 28 minutes right now coming in from 35 in Lytle. It's not looking too bad. We have 17 minutes and even coming in from Highway 90. We have a 19 minute drive time, but of course you got to make sure that you're taking it easy out there on the roadways. Let's take one last look around town. I 10 at ProBand. Make sure that you keep your eyes on the road. We'll have our eyes on the road here in the traffic lab as well. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, two people in the hospital following a crash on the city's south side. It happened on Shane Road that's just outside of Loop 410, and our Jonathan Coto joins us live now from the scene with the details. So, Jonathan, it sounds like it was a pretty bad crash, was it? David, the crash was pretty bad. We do know the man and woman involved in that crash were even pinned inside their vehicle until emergency crews were able to arrive. But this is what we know right now. San Antonio Police Department say they responded to the 2900 block of Shane Road. That's just outside of Loop 410 on the city's south side. Just minutes 
before midnight. They say a male driver and a female passenger were pinned inside their vehicle after going over railroad tracks and crashing into a tree. Now, the driver is believed to be in his 40s and the female passenger in her late teens or early 20s. We do know San Antonio Fire Department, along with EMS, responded quickly to the scene. They say they were able to quickly extract the driver pinned inside, but struggled a little more to get the female passenger out. Now, the female passenger is said to be in critical condition while the male driver is badly hurt. Right now, police are investigating to determine if alcohol was a factor, but say speed was definitely a factor here as well. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Investigators left with a lot of unanswered questions this morning after a northwest side shooting sends one man to the hospital. It happened around 2 this morning in the parking lot of a dive bar at Babcock and Pru Road. San Antonio police say that's where a man was shot in the hand. That man told investigators that he did not know who shot him, and right now officers are not sure what led up to the shooting. We now know the name of the Bear County Sheriff's cadet who died after a training exercise. That man was 59-year-old Kevin Rowe, the Bear County Medical Examiner, listing cardiovascular disease as his cause of death. The Sheriff's Office says he began to have trouble breathing during that training exercise and was allowed to rest but lost consciousness. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Renewal arrangements are now being made for Roe. The Sheriff's Office says he will receive full honors. Will you see an increase in your CPS energy bill starting next year? That answer is most likely. CPS Energy expected to propose an increase to City Council today. And Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to explain how much and when that could happen. Well, it's a rate increase. David and Stephanie, that's been talked about for months, especially after the February winter storm. But today, CPS Energy is expected to propose a rate increase to City Council. The utility company will ask City Council today to consider a 3.85% increase to the base rate, far below the 10% hike that former CEO Paula Gold Williams had previously said CPS Energy was considering. But it likely won't be the last increase. The plan is to consider another incremental increase in a couple of years. However, the proposed 3.85% hike rate does not include the energy or fuel costs related to the February freeze. CPS Energy is exploring ways to help pay for energy and fuel costs from that winter event. The utility company says it's made several improvements since that storm, including adding more circuits. The last time City Council approved a rate hike was back in 2013 with a 4.25% bump to the electric and gas base rates. City Council will vote on today's proposal on January 13th. David and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Abortion rights on the line at the Supreme Court in historic arguments over the landmark ruling nearly 50 years ago that declared a nationwide right to end a pregnancy. Today, the justices will weigh whether to uphold a Mississippi law that bans abortion after 15 weeks and overrule the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. Mississippi is also asking the court to overrule the 1992 ruling in Planned Parenthood versus, versus Casey, which reaffirmed Roe. The case comes to a court with a 6-3 conservative majority that has been transformed by three appointees of former President Donald Trump, who had pledged to appoint justices he said would oppose abortion rights. And this morning, the Biden administration is now considering stricter testing rules for people traveling to the U.S. It comes as more countries report cases of the variant. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, the CDC is stepping up efforts to detect the Omicron variant. The White House is now offering testing for international travelers at airports in New York, Atlanta, Newark, and San Francisco. And the administration says it's now working to modify testing guidelines to require people coming to the U.S. to be tested one day before their flight. We have the tools and surveillance in place to identify the Omicron variant. We also have the tools to prevent Omicron from increasing the strain on our society and our healthcare system. Hundreds of Omicron cases have been confirmed in at least 20 countries. The World Health Organization is urging unvaccinated people over age 60 to postpone travel. Doctors say it could be weeks before critical information about the variant is known, including its transmissibility and whether vaccines can stop it. This new variant is a cause for concern but not panic. There are some positive signs emerging. Israel's health minister says early data indicates people who've received the vaccine booster shot are protected. 
And a scientist who helped develop Pfizer's COVID vaccine says even if the variant causes more breakthrough infections, the vaccine should prevent severe illness. Dr. Anthony Fauci says as of now, the variant is not a reason to cancel holiday gatherings. I would not change any plans, but that doesn't mean you should be cavalier about it. People should try and get vaccinated if they're not vaccinated and get a boost as soon as you can. The first at-home pill to treat COVID is one step closer to approval. An FDA advisory panel voted 13 to 10 in favor of Merck's pill aimed at treating some adults who have mild to moderate symptoms. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And of course, a lot of people here in San Antonio and South Texas have taken a hit because of the pandemic. And if you need assistance, if you need some food, the San Antonio Food Bank is holding a mega distribution later on this morning. They'll hand out boxes of food at the AT&T Center. It'll start at 9 o'clock this morning. It'll run till 1030. You can register on site or pre-register online. We've got a link for you on our website, ksat.com. It is now 610 and 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we've made it to December and the holiday season is in full swing. We're going to take a look at some of this year's amazing light displays in Windcrest. And speaking of the holidays, have you picked out your ugly sweater yet? Microsoft's got a new one on the market with a new theme. This and more after the break. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a little foggy out there. We're starting your day at 53 degrees. Not as cold as yesterday, but not too bad either. Kind of mild. We'll be right back. Top of your morning consumer news, sales on Cyber Monday. Online spending hit $10.7 billion on Cyber Monday, slightly down from a record $10.8 billion last year. But analysts are still predicting record-breaking digital sales over the entire holiday season. And Microsoft ready for the holidays. The tech giant selling Windows-themed ugly sweaters for the second year in a row. This year's design is dedicated to the classic Windows game Minesweeper. They cost about $75 at the Xbox Gear Shop. The sweater campaign supports a charity. Is that an ugly sweater? Does that qualify as ugly? Uh, it's it's kind of cool. I've seen some I've seen some uglier. But I like it better that it supports a charity. So that's not too bad. A uh, little foggy out there on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yes, yeah, and you know what? When we talk about ugly sweaters, I think of Christmas cards, right? Right now, people are probably getting ready to send theirs out. My best friend and I are thinking about doing one this year, so will you guys give me your dresses? I'll send them over yes. and put it on your fridge. Great. I would right. love it. All would right, awesome. All right, just double checking. <laughs> All right, uh, 1604 at Spurs Reds. Let's go ahead and take a look. As Steph mentioned, there are some foggy roads out there. Right now, 410 at Jackson Keller. We're seeing some pretty smooth commutes, though, from a lot of these shots at TransGuide. But in other areas, definitely, you're going to want to make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of time and giving yourself space between drivers, especially when conditions can be a little bit foggy out there. Let's go ahead and take you to the map, though, because we spotted some stalls out there, I-35 northbound at O'Connor Road. Uh, that's been a problem for a little while. Now, so make sure you give those drivers plenty of room. Let's do some hopping over here, though, because we have the same situation off Loop 410 northbound at Old Pearsall Road. A jump down over here does show we have another one off I-35 northbound at Benton City Road. So that does seem to be the trending problem of the morning. But thankfully, if you take a wider look at the map, we still do see a lot of green. So that means we have a lot of open lanes. But again, take it slow out on the roads. Here's US 90 at Medio Creek, where we spotted a lot of fog out there a little bit earlier. Definitely present there. US 90 at State Highway 211, guys. Thank you, Stephen. A little foggy in that last shot over there, but it will go away, right, Justin? It should. We think mid morning. We've been checking in on some of the visibilities out there, and they are coming down in a few spots, uh, especially eastern parts of Bear County. So that's that's a spot we're going to watch uh, going forward. E e anywhere here around San Antonio, uh, the fog could start to kind of settle in. So let's take a look at the current visibilities. And you look at Seguin, New Braunfels, down towards Pleasanton, also uh, Castroville and Hondo, places that have been consistently seeing fog this morning. But notice at the airport, still 10 mile visibility. That goes for Port SA, close to 10 miles there. Stinson Randolph has been back and forth. So we've seen this number come down quite a bit. Now it's jumped back up. So we'll see if we can uh, make it through the morning commute without any fog really building in here in town. We'll keep you posted for sure. Kennedy, Gonzalez, Beeville, Victoria also seeing some fog, not to mention Rock Springs and Carrizo Springs. That moisture coming back in here, and that's what's helping to uh, generate some of this fog. Dense fog advisory is in effect until 9 a.m., and I think that's probably when the fog will start to 
go away. Any, any of that uh, morning cloud cover will start to break up. And by the time we get into the lunch hour, should be looking pretty good out there. Well, let's take a look at the month of December. We are headed into December. The monthly rainfall on average here in San Antonio, two inches. And as far as temperatures go, we start off averaging 67 for a high and fall back down to about 63. The lows starting off at 45, drop down to 41. It can get uh, awful cold here in, in December. As we know, we've seen snow before. Remember back in 2017, in early December, we got some snow, not in the forecast this year. Uh, and in fact, we're looking to stay above average into next week. So we're starting December off kind of on a warm note. Right now, we've got 51 degrees at the airport, reporting clear skies, so uh, certainly not seeing any morning clouds or fog here yet. 46 Boulevardy, 49 New Braunfels, 55 Canyon Lake, 52 in Castroville, 56 right now in Los Maples. Here at 57 in Catula, 59 right now in Del Rio. Dew points? Well, we'll start to see those uh, numbers rise. And by the way, today obviously is some fog, but even tomorrow and Friday, Saturday could see some fog in the morning time as the moisture kind of sticks around. We're expecting a frontal boundary on Sunday, at least Sunday or into early Monday, and that'll drop dew points off just a little bit. So here's how our forecast looks. Some high clouds drifting through this afternoon. I think those thicken up a little bit tomorrow, so a little bit more cloud cover on your Thursday. And then by Friday, we'll get some spotty showers moving back in. A little piece of energy comes in from Mexico. That'll bring in a slight chance for rain. And I mean slight. It's, it's not a big chance at all. And that'll be the case on Sunday, too. So as far as rain chances go, Nothing that jumps off the page here uh, was uh, on Sunday. It's going to be with that frontal boundary that we may see a few more showers, maybe a storm. 75 degrees, the high temperature today, south southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We break out in the mostly sunny skies this afternoon. We'll go 76 tomorrow, 74 on Friday, 20% chance of rain, and then upper 70s over the weekend. Quite a bit of cloud cover, and there is an outside chance for a shower to Sunday into early Monday with that front. It does cool us down some, but not a lot. 68 Monday. 74 on Tuesday, guys. Hmm, 20% chance. That's Not it. too bad. Yeah. We'll take it. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Time now, 619 and about 53 degrees out there. And still coming up on Good Morning San Antonio, the UTSA Roadrunners are not perfect anymore, but they still have a shot at their first conference championship coming up Friday night. We'll have a little preview on the way. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages six and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's T-minus eight days until Michael Strahan's lift off to space. And this morning, we're about to hear exclusive details on his training regimen. We cover each portion, every event, you know, from the engine start to lift off to separation from the booster itself to re-entry into the atmosphere and landing. Sarah Knight serves as capsule communication between Blue Origin Mission Control and the crew of New Shepard 19. They have literally changed my life and I have never even flown. So I cannot wait for Michael to get up in the morning and to meet his crew. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live interview with one of Michael Strahan's distinguished crewmates, Laura Shepard Churchley. She's the daughter of Alan Shepard, the first American in space and the fifth person to walk on the moon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi. ABC News, New York. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. COVID-19 has taken its toll on the Cowboys again. Another player will be sidelined for tomorrow night's game in New Orleans after a positive test. Rookie Nashawn Wright now joins Terrence Steele on the COVID reserve list, along with head coach Mike McCarthy, who will not be on the sidelines tomorrow night. The good news, the Cowboys will be getting wide receiver CeeDee Lamb back, who has been cleared to play 
after he suffered a concussion against the Chiefs. Kickoff for Cowboys and Saints tomorrow night, 720. All the UTSA Roadrunners preparing for their biggest game in school history when they host Western Kentucky this Friday night for their first ever shot at the Conference USA Championship. Comes during a season of first, the biggest, their first 11 win season that ended with their only loss. It'll be the Roadrunners' second meeting this season against the Hilltoppers. They won the first in week six. It was a shootout, 52-46. The Roadrunners realized it might take another Herculean effort on offense to take down the title. The Conference USA Championship game starts 6 o'clock Friday at the Alamo Dome. And tonight, the Spurs are back on the court. They are on the road. Not tonight, tomorrow night. I'll give them another day off. They'll need a day off because it's going to be a tough road trip because they got, they've got Portland tomorrow night and then they play, I think it's Golden, Golden State, State and then Phoenix. I think that's the order. So that's, uh, that's three brutal games on the road. They're, they've won two in a row too. So hopefully a little momentum carry on the road. They might be able to surprise one of those teams. I hope so. That'd that be would be, that would so, be great. So they leave today and then they'll play tomorrow. All right, go Spurs go. Time now, 625 and 53 degrees for now. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll have the latest on an overnight shooting on the north side of town. A teenage girl is in the hospital battling critical injuries. We'll tell you what we know so far. And a quick look at the roads with TransSky. There's a look there at I-10 and I-10 and ProVan. Things are moving right now, but as you can see, it's a little foggy out there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. We're outside of Bamsey where two people were brought after a crash on the city's south side. The details coming up next. I'm ABC's M. Wynn live on Capitol Hill. Supreme Court justices are expected to hear oral arguments on a case that could overturn Roe versus Wade. Coming up. Outside with live cam, sun's trying to come up. There's some fog in the area. Yeah, Justin, did you see that? That's a pretty good looking picture, isn't it? It's nice. Very nice. It's going to be a nice day. Justin's got your forecast coming up. Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's December 1st. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it looks beautiful out there. Uh, we're starting a little foggy and kind of mild at 53 degrees, not as cold as yesterday. A lot of us understand mm -hmm. what little foggy means yeah. when we start the day. Well, it's interesting. It, it just hasn't been a problem here <laughs> in San Antonio so far, but we're completely surrounded by fog. Uh, so there have been some issues out there. It's just not here in town. And in fact, that sunrise looked nice, didn't it? Yeah, yeah it did. It'll be a nice morning. It'll be a nice afternoon, too. Uh, we see the visibility down to close to about a quarter of a mile in Hondo. Castroville's been close to zero. Pleasanton close to zero. So that is where we're having some issues. West of town, south of town, east of town. New Braunfels, mile and a half. Seguin, quarter of a mile. But visibility doing okay here in town. We don't have any of those morning clouds yet either. We've seen some of the, the morning cloudiness up towards Kerrville, but Rock Springs close to zero. Creosote Springs, quarter of a mile, so that's an area where we're seeing some fog too. Dense fog advisories, by the way, in effect until 9 a.m. this morning. Temperature wise, right around 50 here across San Antonio. 59 Kerrville, 54 Rock Springs, 49 in Gonzales, 52 in Beeville. I mentioned some of those morning low clouds. We are seeing that across the hill country, so a little cloudy there. Kerrville, Bandera, up to Fredericksburg, but uh, the pollen count showing just mold. That's it. We've we've had a good stretch of pollen counts here. It's at 210. We should get that pollen count here in about an hour or so. We'll let you know what it says for today. Forecast some clouds this morning and then 73 around 2 o'clock, 75 the high temperature today. Another beautiful day. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. I think we've seen a little bit of fog in spots on Transguide. Again, if kind of on the outskirts of the city, Stephen, what are you seeing as far as traffic's going? That seems to be the case, Justin. Right now, traffic is moving pretty freely in a lot of these lanes. Let's take a look at TransGuide, see how things are shaping up at 630. Right now, not finding any real big issues out there in terms of that early morning drive and if it's going to cause any issues for your early morning commute. But let's go to take a look around town. Loop 410 at Northwest Military. Traffic moving in a lot of these shots, but again, no big issues that are going to cause those delays. However, let's take you to the map because it has been a morning of stalls I-10 westbound at Loop 410. A stall detected there. Uh, we're going to do some jumping around here like a bunny, so <laughs> bear with us. So a stall off I-35 southbound at I-10 is causing some issues there, but nothing too major to be on, uh, but be on the lookout for that. We have a stall here off Loop 410 east at, at Loop 410 at Loop 410 south, northbound, that is, at East Houston Street. Let's take a jump over here, though. Another stall has been detected at Loop 410 northbound at Old Pearsall Road. And so we continue to see that trend off I-35 northbound at Benton City. So that has been the problem this morning, those stalls. So make sure that you are checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. 
and make sure that you are giving those drivers plenty of room. Quick look at the inbound times. It's pretty much green across the board. So again, no issues if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities. Just remember to take it easy out there as you're we're getting your Wednesday morning started. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a crash on the city's south side sends two people to the hospital. Our Jonathan Coto joins us now live at the scene. So Jonathan, we know it was a pretty bad crash, but we, do we know what led up to that crash? David, you're right. It was a pretty bad crash. And right now, police are saying speed was definitely a factor. They're trying to determine if alcohol was involved. We've learned the man and woman involved in the crash are being treated in the hospital right now. But this is what we know. San Antonio police responded to the 2900 block of Shane Road. That's just outside of Loop 410 on the city's south side, just minutes before midnight. They say a male driver and a female passenger were pinned inside their vehicle after going over railroad tracks and crashing into a a tree. Now, the driver is believed to be in his 40s and the female passenger in her late teens or early 20s. We do know San Antonio Fire Department, along with the EMS, responded quickly to the scene. They say they were able to quickly extract the driver pinned inside, but struggled a little more to get the female passenger out. Now, the female passenger is said to be in critical condition. The male driver was badly hurt. Again, uh, police are trying to investigate if alcohol was a factor in this crash, but of course, all this is under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, a teenage girl fighting for her life after a shooting last night. It happened just after nine on Greencrest Drive. That's on the north side of town, just east of I-10. Police say the girl in her teens was meeting up with some a suspect in front of this house when the shooting happened. The suspect drove away in a dark colored vehicle. The teen girl was taken to the hospital at last check. She was in critical condition. And cleanup is underway after an early morning fire on the west side. That happened at a storage shed near Fredericksburg and Ramona. Firefighters say the shed was fully engulfed when they got there. They say they're not sure what sparked the fire, but no one was hurt. Judson ISD employees will have a little extra money in their paychecks just in time for the holidays. This after the school board approved extra money for full-time and part-time district employees last night. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to explain the bonuses. Good morning. Good morning, Stephanie. David, we all know that teachers and school leaders have been some of our biggest pandemic heroes. It's why Judson ISD says they approved incentives for its employees to encourage retention through the end of the year. In an effort to retain its teachers, Judson ISD just approved an incentive for both full and part-time employees at a special board meeting last night. The board decided to give full-time employees $1,000 and part-time employees $500. In addition, substitute teachers who have worked more than 50 days will be paid $500 and substitutes who have worked between 20 and 49 days will get $400. The total cost of the incentives is $4.2 million, which is funded through special funds provided to help districts recover from the pandemic. Judson ISD Superintendent Dr. Jeanette Ball said, quote, these last few years have not only brought on unique challenges, but it has also highlighted the way our district bands together to always do what is best for the district's kids. The superintendent also said that Judson ISD employees should see those bonuses in their December paychecks. Def uh, David, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. South San ISD board members have called a special meeting. They want to discuss comments made during a meeting back in November by two district of top leaders. The private conversation was captured by a microphone that was left on. Just minutes before the start of the closed session portion of the meeting, the superintendent and board president were discussing contracts and hirings before the mic was finally shut off. Three board members have been asking for a meeting to figure out if any wrongdoing took place. And on Monday, the TEA notified the district a new special investigation was being opened on the allegations that trustees were getting involved in the suspension of an employee and making hiring recommendations. The next board of trustees meeting is set for December 6th at 6 o'clock. And your electric bill will be getting more expensive. CPS officials plan to propose a rate hike of just under 4% to City Council later today. And that's still lower than the 10% increase CPS officials previously talked about. But it likely won't be the last increase. The plan is to consider another incremental increase in a couple of years. CPS Energy also exploring ways to help pay for energy and fuel costs from the February freeze. Utility says it's made several improvements since that storm, including adding more circuits. 
Our city health officials are telling us that even with the emergence of the new COVID-19 Omicron variant, vaccines are still the best weapon against the holiday surge in cases. The CDC is recommending all adults ages 18 and up to get boosters to protect against the new variant. Along with the vaccines, local experts saying testing is equally important to know which strains of the virus are in our city. Testing doesn't mean you have to test every single sample that tests positive for COVID. As long as you have a good representative samples tested positive and further sequenced, you, are, you stand a good chance of picking up the, the variant strain. We have more information for you on the Omicron variant and booster shots. Let's go to our website, kset.com. In your morning headlines, three students are dead this morning after a 15-year-old sophomore opened fire at his Michigan high school. Eight other people were hurt during that incident yesterday, some critically. Authorities were made aware of allegations circulating on social media that there had been threats of a shooting at the roughly 1,700 student school. However, they say they didn't know about the rumors until after the attack. That suspect was taken into custody. Chris Cuomo has been suspended from his nightly show on CNN. And that's after transcripts released by New York's attorney general revealed he had a big role in helping his brother, Andrew, ex-governor of New York, navigate past a sexual harassment scandal. CNN says Cuomo's suspension is indefinite and the investigation continues. And in just a few hours, the U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear arguments for the most significant abortion rights case in the last three decades. Mississippi is asking the court to overturn Roe versus Wade and with the most conservative majority in a generation. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from the Supreme Court. This morning, Roe versus Wade hangs in the balance as the highest court considers a case on a new Mississippi law that seeks to ban nearly all abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. It's significantly earlier than the approximate 24 weeks established by Roe in 1973. This is the first time ever that a state has asked an originalist Supreme Court or a majority originalist Supreme Court to overturn Roe. The case, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, where the outcome could redefine reproductive rights across the country and impact other sectors from health care and the economy to criminal justice. It'll be heard by a court whose new conservative majority of justices, three chosen by former President Trump, is widely viewed as more sympathetic to opponents of abortion rights than any in a generation. Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Kavanaugh are sort of the two key justices to watch. This case comes as Texas hits three months with a near total ban on abortion still in place. Experts expected the court to rule on the Texas case ahead of the Mississippi one, but no decision yet. I think that if they end up deciding the Mississippi and Texas cases together, they I think the most likely result would be they would uphold the Mississippi ban and then they would send the Texas case back to the lower courts. But the majority of Americans want Roe to stand. A recent poll by ABC News and The Washington Post found three in four say the choice to have an abortion should be left to the woman and her doctor. If Roe is reversed or rolled back, nearly half the states in the country are poised to ban or severely restrict abortion. The justices are not expected to announce their decision until next summer, but we might get a better understanding about how they might rule by listening to today's oral arguments. And when ABC News, Washington. It is now 641 and 53 degrees. You may call him one of Santa's helpers. With every brushstroke, he helps businesses get ready for the holiday season. I'm Katrina Weber. That story's coming up. Hi, welcome back. It is 644. So Christmas already has some local shops and businesses courtesy the work of one man. His artistry mainly can be seen on windows, although he has also painted everything from walls to signs to cars. In this week's If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber shows us how he brings the holiday cheer even when the calendar says otherwise. Never mind jingle bells. Todd Robinson gets into the holiday mood just from the ringing of his phone. You got a lot of people that start in June, what? like Cash America, the pawn shops, they start their Christmas layaway in June. Even in summer, he can be as busy as a North Pole elf, painting one on for Christmas whenever customers call. He makes a living decorating windows of businesses with his holiday artwork. Although in life, 
he never really liked to color inside the lines. I used to make fashion. I used to make my clothes where people would buy them off my back. I performed at the Hollywood Palladium in front of the stars when I was a kid. Mural painting, any kind of window art, vehicle paint, sign paints, I do whatever you want. This California native is a jack of all trades. But it was while working in Texas's oil fields that he decided to put his natural talent to work. I got off one day and within four hours I made $600 painting and I never turned back. That was 14 years and countless Santa inspired scenes ago. He says he sometimes paints more than a dozen windows in a day. My hands will get where they cramp. I do so much art. There may be a saying that you can't rush perfection, but Robinson says he makes sure that he gets it done right and right now. He says working quickly is a must. You got to get it started. You got to get it started. Or a lot of people won't get done. And if that means painting pictures of snow when the weather calls for snow cones, Robinson is ready and willing to do it. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Man, that's pretty awesome. Looks good. Enjoy that artwork. Another thing you can enjoy is the massive light show on full display at the northeast side of town. Yeah, so every year the Holly Lights in the Windcrest area attract people from all over the city. I want a night shot. I hope Santa's <laughs> careful climbing the ladder, though. Remember there we did the story earlier today about oh my goodness, not at... getting hurt. Oh, cookie. Man, that was some big cookie. Wow, that is really nice. Ooh. It gets really crowded. Oh, that's beautiful. Pretty. I'm, I'm hoping that we can check it out this year. Well, now that they're up, it's December 1st. You have a lot of days, so hopefully it won't get too crowded over there. You know the traffic's going to be just... Yeah, just maybe we can... Find a way during the week. Find a way during the to week kind to kind of go, sneak, to sneak on through. Which brings us to traffic now. Yes. Yep. Uh, we are taking a look here at this shot from Trans Guide US 98 Highway 211. It reminds me of Pride and Prejudice when Mr. Darcy is out there emerging from the mist. But you can see right now traffic has been moving there. I didn't think they had cars back then. So <laughs> right now things have been moving pretty freely through that area, but it's not looking too great in that outlying uh, outside of the San, uh, San Antonio area. So make sure you're driving carefully if you have to travel down US 90 State Highway 211 is that shot, but let's bring you back to uh, here in town. We still have that saw off I-10 westbound at Loop 410, and instead of doing some hopping like a bunny, we're going to do some prancing like a reindeer because we are in December. Uh, let's go ahead and take a jump down over here off I-35 South. Uh, a prance over here off I-35 South and at I-10. Traffic building in that area due to a stall. Another prance over here does show Loop 410 at, e at Loop 410 northbound at East Houston Street. Pardon me. And then we take a wider look and we still see some congestion building up from where those stalls are detected. So make sure you are taking it easy out on the roadways. Again, a really last uh, it's actually looking. I like this weather, Justin. I like it looking like that. So uh, how's it going to be looking the rest of the day, though? Man, kudos to you for Pride and Prejudice that uh... yeah, it just yeah. I love that vibe. Well done. Just drive safe. Yes, be careful out there. The fog <laughs> is there. We, we notice uh, that the, it's thick right where you show that trans guy shot over towards Hondo along 90 there. That's where the fog has been uh, fairly thick. And then we're also noticing it uh, east as you go out of town into parts of Seguin, New Braunfels. In fact, I picked up a trans guy camera here along I-10 uh, just to the east of Seguin. And that's the scene there, I-10 across road. You can see some of the fog. So we are dealing with it, not necessarily here in San Antonio, but around the city, fog has become a problem. Dense fog advisory in effect until 9 a.m. That includes San Antonio I-35 corridor and points to the south and east where fog has uh, continued to develop. Live cam shows that we're doing just fine at the airport. Uh, 51 degrees there, 52 stints and 50 Kelly, 50 at Randolph and light winds. It was a good setup for fog this morning, and that's why I think we are seeing it around the area. 59 Kerrville, 58 in Comfort, 55 Kenya Lake, 46, one of the cool spots there in New Braunfels, and 59 on Del Rio, one of the warm spots. And uh, we're seeing that uh, warmer weather, if you will, Kerrville and Fredericksburg too, because there is a little area of cloud cover right over top of you. And that's keeping temperatures just a little bit warmer. Dew points are on their way up, 40s and 50s, and we'll see those numbers rise a little bit more next few days. Here's the big picture. We've got a little bit of a trough across the middle part of the country, but not a lot of cold air working into the United States, at least at, at this moment. 31 International Falls. The really cold stuff, coldest temperature we could find, Caribou, Maine. 11 degrees this morning compared to our 51. That's a part of some colder air that we can see up in Canada. The numbers are really, really cold up here. Uh, negative 27, copper mine, negative nine, and yellow knife. What does this mean? Well, sometimes when we can see a lot of cold air building in Canada, it'll spill south, especially this time of year. 
There's no indication that's going to happen just yet, but we like to keep an eye on these temperatures. We'll let you know if there is a stronger cold front on the way. So far, it has been mild, and it looks like we're going to have a mild start to December. Forecast calls for some high clouds today. That's it. A few more high clouds tomorrow will be partly cloudy. We may start off with some more fog and cloud cover tomorrow. And by the time we get into Friday, a little disturbance works through. That may bring a shower or two, but it is not going to be widespread rain. Rain chances are 20% or less. We'll have another small shot Sunday into Monday. Forecast for the rest of today, we go up to 75. Those clouds will clear out south. Winds 5 to 10. Your extended forecast, 76 tomorrow, 74 on Friday, 20% chance of rain. Mid-70s this weekend, another small chance with a weak front Sunday into Monday. Cools us down some, but not a lot, 68 on Monday. I know Rudolph's probably resting, getting ready for the big night, but we mm. might need him to prance through all this fog. That's true. true. Yeah, lead the way. It is a little foggy out there. Yeah, he'll make an early appearance <laughs> for us, hopefully. He should. <laughs> and then rest up again for Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> Time now, 6.51 and 53 degrees. Very often women face body image challenges, but new study shows it's becoming more of an issue with men. Tomorrow GMSA, the reason behind the increase in male eating disorders. And taking a look outside with live cam. No Rudolph there, but a beautiful <laughs> shot of the sky. We'll be right back. Good morning, everyone. If you are sipping your cup of coffee and plan on heading out the roads, here's what you can expect right now. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Let's take one last look there. Well, we've had some fog in the area, so be on the lookout for that. But for now, here in town, we have a stall off Loop 410 at northbound at East Houston Street. And a jump over here, a stall still remains off I-35 southbound at I-10, Justin. Thanks, sir. Fog hasn't been so bad here in San Antonio. We do have a dense fog advisory in effect until 9 a.m., though, and some lower visibility out in places like Castroville, Seguin, up to New Braunfels, and down towards Pleasanton. So be careful out there. It'll last a little bit longer. Forecast calls for a high of 73 degrees today. Mostly sunny skies uh, during the afternoon hours. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour in the extended forecast. Well, uh, we'll get the temperatures in the 70s this weekend. And there you see the temperatures across the country, uh, but uh, we'll get some cooler temperatures uh, maybe early next week, guys, with uh, a frontal boundary and some more slight rain chances in the forecast. All right, so maybe it will feel like December next week. I don't know about that. We'll get closer. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for joining us today. That's it. We're done. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow morning.